Hello, everyone, and welcome to Locked On Flames. The Flames stood strong against the Oilers and took game one of the re first regular season matchup against the Edmonton Oilers. And you know what? You don't get a trophy or a ring for winning a regular season game, but Dan Vladar definitely should be taken out to dinner. And we're going to talk about that and more on today's episode of Locked On Flames. Your Locked On Flames, your daily podcast on the Calgary Flames. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Locked On Flames. I'm your host, Jess Belmosto, and I'm so excited to be here with you for another week here at Locked On Flames. As always, thank you for joining me, and make sure that you're subscribed to Locked On Flames wherever you get your podcasts. And of course, make sure that you're subscribed on YouTube as well so we can interact in the comments and, of course, talk more about the Calgary Flames. Let's jump right into this game one recap, or uh, it's not even a game one. It is quite literally a regular season game. So let's jump right into this first matchup of the season between the Edmonton Oilers and the Calgary Flames. I think that people had this expectation that this was going to be some sort of like playoff, like revenge game. And I don't think that the Flames went into that into it with that sort of mentality you know they have moved on from last season and the off season and are pushing forward and it is very clear that this is a different team and I know it's only been two games so you're probably thinking Jess like you're you're jumping on this like way too early what are you talking about and I thought that this team looked faster they looked like they were in much better shape and they were disciplined you know uh, Trevor Lewis was taking all sorts of high sticking penalties last uh, play last time these two teams met and I don't think he took one this time around so that is very good and of course you know I think that the goaltending as well stood tall and we're going to talk more about that but let's rewind back to the first period all of the Flames goals <laughs> came within the first period and Jack Campbell got taken out. I had to laugh. I, I really did. Because if you listen to my preview episode with Brett, we both agreed that it wasn't going to be like one of those like nine to six games again or a super high scoring game. But as soon as the Flames <laughs> scored four, I was like, oh no, <laughs> we might have been wrong. But we weren't. And um, I think Jack Campbell has... Uh, been initiated into the Edmonton Oilers gold circle of goaltending and the history of goaltending there in Edmonton uh, in terms of being broken. Stuart Skinner came in and uh, looked, he looked good. He looked great. You know, I think if the Flames weren't going up against him, I think that uh, Jack Campbell might have left, let in a few more goals and it might have been an eight to two game. You never know, right? But uh, Michael Stone, let, let's talk about what actually happened instead of some like hypothesis, but or hypothetical hypothesis, what? But uh, Michael Stone had a three point night, all right? The first of his career. <sighs> And I know that we make the jokes of Michael Stone just being like the seventh defenseman. We know he's going to get scratched. Like he's there, but he's kind of made his presence known in a very good way. And I'm a little, um, I don't want to say worried, but I'm a little concerned for when Oliver Shillington comes back. And we see, you know, who get who has to get taken out of the lineup because I don't think that they're going to bench or scratch their uh, defenseman that they just signed to that few-year contract extension. So we'll have to see there. And of course, and of course, Backland, Kadri, and Mangiapane all lit the lamp as well. And, you know, it is just something 
so special about a Mangiapane road goal because they go together like peanut butter and jelly. Like, what else goes together very well? I guess the Oilers and Flames. Well, you know, just two great things. But I was thoroughly impressed with this Flames team. And I think, for me, one of the most impressive lines, you're all going to be shocked when I say this. So please make sure that you are sitting down. But it was the Richie, Lucian, <laughs> and uh, Rooney line. Yes, the line that I said would be the least effective this season stood so strong against the Oilers, and I loved it. I thought that this whole team looked great. They just looked like a team. They looked as if they have been playing together for years. That chemistry, the cohesiveness, and just everything about it was great. Dan Vladar, on top of it all, looked phenomenal. He looked like he had been getting regular reps, and he looked like he truly had been putting in the work this summer, and it was obvious he has taken that next step as a goaltender and I I am looking forward to his weekly starts Daryl Sutter said hey you know I think we're gonna start him at least once once a week so you know there's that and that is something to look forward to he saved 27 shots and uh, he fought down to the final second I was worried because uh, the last like you know, um, I would say 30 seconds of the game was in front of Vladar's net. And the Oilers just kept those shots coming. And Vladar, like, at one point, I it was like 1 o'clock in the morning here. And I just screamed, squeeze the pads at my TV. Because I was so worried that, like, it was just going to go five hole. But it didn't. And Vladar just came out on top as well. As the Flames, you know, working together. And it, it was just really nice to see them win a solid game and have a really solid performance against another very solid team. So we're going to talk more about my takeaways from this game coming up next. But I do want to take a quick break to tell you about Simply Safe. Simply Safe is uh, a great way to keep your home safe and the numbers don't lie in the last decade over 4 million people have chosen simply safe home security to protect their home you don't earn the trust of that many people without doing something right at simply safe your safety is the only thing that matters i highly recommend simply safe because i think you know like they said the numbers don't lie they protect you with cutting edge security technology Empowered by 24-7 professional monitoring agents who have your back. And they have a fantastic uh, customer service and agents that call you the moment a threat is detected and dispatch the police or first responders if there is an emergency. Even if you're not home or can't be reached. Simply Safe blankets your home in protection with advanced sensors in every room, window, and door. H HD security cameras for inside and outside of your home. Customize the perfect system for your home in just a few minutes at simplysafe.com forward slash locked on NHL. Save 20% on your Simply Safe security system when you sign up for an interactive monitoring plan and get your first month free. Visit simplysafe.com slash locked on NHL to learn more. Thank you all for following along with Locked On Flames. I'm Jess Belmosto. I greatly appreciate it. And uh, if you're interested in following me on Twitter for more live tweets or, uh, you know, kind of up to the minute updates with the Flames, uh, you can follow me on Twitter at Jess Belmosto. The second period. I was a little worried with the second period because I felt like the Flames dialed it back. This is something that I've noticed with them a couple times uh, in the last year. But they, it's not that they fall asleep. Because I don't think it's them just completely checking out. I think that it is them just kind of getting comfortable. 
the Oilers cut the lead in half, and I felt like Calgary just did get way too comfortable with that uh, four to. Uh, I believe it was a four to one lead at that. No, it was a four nothing lead at that point. Sorry. But there was a, there truly was a sense of urgency in that first period. They came out cranked at 150%. And the second period, they, (laughs) they dialed it back to a hundred percent or maybe 95%. And I don't know if that's going to be the strategy that wins you the most games. I mean, it worked it worked this time. But I think what's scary to think about is I, I use scary. That is such like an overstatement. Like we're talking hockey here, but it it's not an effective method for for all and for everything. You know, I don't think every team is going to make that work. It's not going to work for every opponent. Um and it's going to be very easy to plan your attack around. You know, your opponent will be able to say, oh, you know, in the second period, Calgary comes out at 90% instead of full strength or full speed, so why don't we just use that to our advantage and crank it up? But I I don't want to say that they didn't play the full 60 because we have seen this team not play a full 60. And... it is nowhere near that. I don't think that it is a level of concern yet. Like, I just noticed. It was something that I noticed and something to keep an eye on because that is – that could become a level of concern or a problem area if it continues. And, you know, I definitely think we should take in uh, – you know, watch the game against Vegas tomorrow night with a little bit more of an analytical eye – and see if they repeat the same quote-unquote mistakes that they made against the Oilers in the second period. But I think that they are in a much better shape than they were this time last year. And Daryl Sutter even said it himself. I think that this team is faster. I think that they have enough engine, or no, sorry, enough gas in their tank to get them through. I think that they are a very strong team. I don't think that it's, you know, something where, you know, we're two games into the season and we have to start panicking. I think any team that's two games into the season and panicking is getting way too ahead of themselves here. I mean, this isn't, this isn't football where you're only playing once a week, you know? Um, (laughs) We have a long season ahead of us and sure. Do you want to, you know, kind of nip the bad habits in the bud right now, of course. But I don't think that the Flames are exhibiting anything like that, thankfully. Something else I noticed was that the Oilers had 19 giveaways compared to the Flames' seven. Seven. And I think that that is absolutely wild. And, you know, that's that's something concerning for the Oilers. And the Flames had 10 takeaways. I am thoroughly impressed with how this team has played through these two games, especially this quote-unquote high-stakes game, um, especially with it being a division rival, especially with it being someone that you um, have to prove yourself against. And especially, you know, like, talk is talk. I understand that, like, they don't Daryl Sutter isn't tuning in to Lockdown Flames on his way to the Saddle Dome, but one thing that is important is just, you know, paying attention to what is going on outside of hockey and like what are other people's like me saying this game doesn't matter. I mean, I'm not okay. Me saying this game matters in the bigger, you know, grand scheme of things might not mean anything to the Flames. You know, they are probably taking it one game at a time. But I think for this team, they are looking to get the confidence under their belt early. I think that they have the confidence. I don't think that they, um, you know, are out there searching for it. But I am very impressed, again, with just what we've been seeing. 
I thought the special teams looked great. You know, they were able to optimize and capitalize on uh, one of their four power plays. So that is good. That special teams practice must have done something because they had a solid PK as well. So everything is trending in the right direction. I There's no reason for anyone to be like, well, they could have done this. Well, they could have done that. No, you know, it's early in the season. And yeah, the Flames are 2-0. and Okay. Again, none of this matters. <laughs> like, you know, you don't get a trophy for starting the season, you know, 3-0, and 9-0, and 6-0, and whatever. Like, you don't get a trophy for any of that. You, you need to prove your longevity through June. <laughs> and, you know, that is – it is way too early to be making playoff predictions – or anything like that. So again, just like the Flames are taking things one game at a time, let us do the same. And tomorrow, the Flames are facing Vegas, and I will have a game preview up for you. But first, we are going to take a quick break before we jump into our three stars of the game, and uh, you know, give a little little stick taps to some of our some of our Flames. Remember to subscribe to Locked on Flames wherever you're listening to us. And thank you so much for even listening. I appreciate you. Uh, I don't even know what to say. I just, I really do appreciate you. And I look forward to your comments. I think that it's, uh, you know, being on YouTube is a great way to interact and kind of share different opinions and, you know, have that discussion. But let's talk about our three stars of the game. Nazem Kadri, man, this addition to the Flames moved the needle even more than Uyghur and Huberdo. I will safely say that. I think that uh, Kadri has looked great in his first two appearances. I think that he was all over the ice in that two-way game. He looked strong. He looked... You know, he had that nasty, nasty ankle breaker uh, move on Brett Kulak there, and I loved it. I thought that he looked great. Um, It was just, you know, he scored a goal. What more could you ask for? I just am so impressed, and I'm so grateful that Brad Tree Living was able to go out there and – Lock him up for a very long time. And then, of course, we have Dan Vladar. If you've listened to this show for a while, you know that I've been very high on Dan Vladar. And I think last season was a little bit rough for him because, you know, he had he started 2022 uh, playing three of the toughest teams in the league. And that was Tampa, Florida, and Carolina. And he didn't look very good out there. He did not look very good out there at all. And I think that that, uh, you know, caused, it rocked his confidence. It not only rocked his confidence, but it contributed to Sutter maybe not playing him as much. And I think Sutter is, again, we talk about it all the time here. Sutter is a what have you done for me lately kind of coach. And I think that, uh, those appearances were not very favorable. So Sutter went out there and, um, you know, kind of just only used Vladar when he absolutely needed to. But this year it looks like Vladar will be starting uh, making weekly appearances, which is great to see. I'm so excited to see, you know, Markstrom get some rest. And Vladar getting getting in some serious reps. I think it's wonderful to see. But, um, you know, he had a fantastic game. Like I mentioned earlier, he had to fight until the final second. Until that buzzer went off. Until that clock struck zero. He, he had to fight. And he was fighting for his life for like the last minute of the game. And I think that what is fantastic about Vladar is that he didn't look like he looked like Jacob Markstrom, um, just completely locked in laser focused, unbothered. Um, 
And I really appreciate that. I really appreciate how confident he looked. And I think that this was a big win for him, for his confidence. And then, of course, going forward in the season, because I don't think that, uh, you know, he Daryl Sutter would have the same amount of trust in him had he given up a late goal. And, of course... My first star goes to Michael Stone in his first ever three-point game. I just realized something. Isn't he, isn't his brother Mark Stone, who's on Vegas? I don't know. I, I could be making that up, but, you know, I think Michael Stone is doing pretty well for himself. I thought that, um... Again, his first two games, have lo- he has looked fantastic. And for him to go out against a highly competitive team like Edmonton and have a three-point game as your typical quote-unquote seventh defenseman is great. That speaks volumes to his talent, to his ability, and I think where his game is at. And I think that that's pretty great. Um, I, again, I... Obviously, we want Oliver Shillington back. That is not up for debate here, but I really like what we're getting. Uh, I don't want to say instead of, but in place of um, Shillington with Stone's game. So we'll just have to keep an eye on that and see where that goes. But I'm thoroughly impressed with this team from top to bottom. I think things are really trending in the right direction and as they should. Honestly, you know what? I know this team is not an underdog anymore. They're still a small market team, but they are getting a lot of attention. And they have proved to not be the underdog. And uh, I think that that's great. I think that, you know, the expectations are high for this team and you just love to see it. And we will keep on rocking with the Flames until the very end and thank you all for hanging out with me until the very end of today's episode so thank you so much for tuning in to locked on flames and as always you can find the show wherever you listen to your podcasts and uh, you can follow the show's twitter feed at lo underscore flames pod you can follow me on twitter at jess Bomasto, and of course i will be back tomorrow with a preview against the Vegas Golden Knights. Until then, stay safe, be kind, and buy yourself a coffee. It's Monday. Bye-bye.